Assalamu alaikum and peace. Welcome back. Black and Muslim in America, Muslim and Black in America. Been a while. I've been away for so long because I got put on strike for one week by YouTube for one of my videos that I posted like oh, a little bit over a week ago. Um. I'm going to post a link to the SoundCloud SoundCloud link to that so you can listen to that on your own. The SoundCloud link will be in the description of this video for the last episode and I'll put a SoundCloud link in the description as well for this broadcast I'm doing as well. But um hope everyone is out there has been doing well. Um I've been doing pretty well myself aside from that. Just been a lot going on, especially out here in the world. And um, I just was reading the Quran over. I started reading the Quran over. I finished reading the tafsir of Ibn Kathir of the whole Quran. And I just decided, okay, now I'm gonna read the Quran over. And as I was reading the Quran over, and I was in Surah Baqarah, Surah 2, chapter two of the Quran, it just, I just find it amazing how to me, when I read it and I reflect upon it, I can see where it is talking about white supremacy. You know, it's like looking at white supremacy in the light of the Quran. That's what I'll call this. Looking at white supremacy in light of the Quran. And certain verses I read make me think about it and make me reflect upon that. And I just want to present that here in this broadcast. So we're going to look at a few ayat, a few verses from Surah 2, chapter 2 of the Quran. I wanted to look at verses 8 through 20, but on this broadcast, I'm only going to do like, I think, eight verses 8 through 13 or 14, and then I'll break it up into a part two and finish it off, inshallah. Don't forget to hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to don't forget to share this with your other Muslim brothers and sisters and black people as well. Black Muslims as well. So that we can get the word out, get the numbers of them on, on these subscribers and all that good stuff. In chapter two of the Quran, verse eight, Allah says, And of the people are some who say, We believe in Allah in the last day but they are not believers when i read this i say to myself these people are the white supremacists amongst the non-muslims they hide behind the religion of christianity as i was witnessing what's going on in the world with white supremacy and just reading the quran over and over and contemplating reading the hadith of the last days and contemplating i came to the realization that white supremacy's religion is Christianity or they use it as a front. So they lie and say, we believe in Allah in the last day, but they are not true believers. For example, even the president himself, he never used to claim to be any religion like that or to be a religious man. Then when he wanted to become president and get the evangelical dollars behind him, as well as to look like a real sincere Republican, he started to claim to be a Christian. See, the Republicans use this lie, that conservatism lie, and they try to say they are Christians, but they are not true believers. Because if these white supremacists and suspect, suspected white supremacists truly believed in Allah in the last day or the day of judgment, they would not enact white supremacy. They would be like John Brown and be totally against it and help to destroy it. My thoughts were confirmed as I was rereading the book ISIS Papers by Dr. Francis Cress Welsing. In this book, she mentions how 
the main religion of white supremacy is Christianity. She mentions this throughout all her book. This is why I continue to be of the opinion that the cross that Jesus Isa bin Maryam, a black man, will break when he returns is the cross of white supremacy because this is the main religion they hide behind. Allah goes on in verse 9 to say, They think to deceive Allah and those who believe, but they deceive not except themselves and perceive it not. The Prophet told us in an authentic hadith that war is deception. This is can be found in Bukhari and Muslim. And this is how white supremacy operates, through deception. Firstly, they think they can deceive Allah. They believe and force upon the world that because Allah made them white, then it is the divine order for them to be supreme, to rule over all of the world. So again, they try to use Christianity as their backdrop and they start to present the prophets of the Bible as white, especially Jesus. And again, in the book, Isis Papers, the doctor mentions this when she talks about how Christians believe Jesus is the son of God. Well, if you believe Jesus is white and you believe Jesus is God's son, then subconsciously you compute that God is white. Now you may say out of your mouth, well, God doesn't have a race, but that's not what's going on subconsciously in your brain. This is one reason saying God has a son or Allah has a son is dangerous and why Islam tells us that Allah has no offspring. But they think to deceive Allah with this. And not only that, they think to deceive the believers with this. White supremacy operates by deception. So during slave times, they used outright force and barbarism and then try to say this is how Allah wanted it. People will try to say, well, in Islam, it's allowed to have slaves. This, that doesn't have to do with race. It has to do with warfare. Just like before white supremacy came on the earth, when people would battle, some would get killed and others would be taken as captives or slaves. And they would be freed over time. Islam taught justice even when dealing with this aspect and taught to free slaves or captives of war for certain reasons as well. What the Quran says is not the same as white supremacy, chattel slavery, or even close. White supremacy, chattel slavery wasn't based on, okay, you lost this war, so we're gonna take some of you as prisoners, or you owe this major debt, you can't pay it back, okay, you have to be my servant for this many years until you pay it off, no. It was, I'm white, you're not, now get over here. That's what that was. So these white supremacists try to tell the non-white world that this is how Allah wants things to be. And they even taught the slaves this and tried to use the Bible to justify white supremacy. And they deceived many. Even now, many are deceived and have a subconscious belief of white worship. Now, after black folks started fighting back, they took the white supremacy behind the curtain. Now the deception is, well, white supremacy doesn't exist anymore. I mean, yeah, there are some instances of races here or there, but white supremacy doesn't exist anymore. Hey, you guys had a black president. Come on now. And even now, many black people fall for this. Black people go along with the deception because they are afraid. They know good and damn well white supremacy exists, but they are afraid to deal with reality. They don't want to accept reality. They want to live in their own made up world of fake happiness and fantasy because in their minds, accepting that white supremacy exists will lead them to have a depressed life. No, you're just a depressed person because you are lying to yourself and not accepting reality. And when reality slaps you dead in the face, that depression hits hard. They even try to deceive you with their politicians. 
who never offer tangibles. They will give specific tangible things to all of the other different groups of America, whether they be the immigrants, whether they be the LGBT community, whether it be specifically for white women, whether it be for, you know, all these other different groups, Native Americans, they will give specific tangibles to all these other different groups, but they will ignore giving specific tangibles to you, to us. But they will use you, they will use us as the backdrop for getting things for everyone else. So they will say things like, well, if we look at the history of America, we see that black slaves were brought over here and they were treated harshly and they're still treated harshly now. And because of that, I started this plan that will help all Americans. It, that's, that's how it flips. You have to watch the word play and how they do it. They will pander to you to get your vote while doing nothing for you. Then you have people, you know, the way they pander to you with with the, with this guy Steyer, I think he just dropped out the race. He had he was up there dancing and jigabooing it up with Juvenile, and I was disappointed in Juvenile for doing this show, but maybe he needed a bag, you know. But he's on stage with the song Back That Ass Up and you got Juvenile on stage and Steyer on stage all dancing and oh I love you Negroes I love your Negro music he's pandering to you he's deceiving you he's he's coming out there dancing a jig for you but he's not offering you anything same thing with Chuck D with Bernie I'm kind of not I'm not feeling you Chucky I'm not feeling you Chucky D that was some lame stuff. And now you even have Chuck D. He kicked out um, Flavor Flay from the group because Flavor Flay wasn't feeling you trying to do a show for Bernie Sanders when, again, Bernie Sanders is not offering black people any specific tangibles. In fact, when you ask Bernie Sanders about specific tangibles, he says, like, if you ask him about specific tangibles like, let's say uh, reparations he says well, well uh, what's that it's not feasible it's not feasible yet he's he'll sign bills to keep giving money to his homeland of so-called israel so now you even have chuck d he's out here using similar words of the a dunce crew and other democratic shills telling black people if you looked on his twitter page telling black people to not be lazy and to stop being bots and to get off the couch and vote. That sounds like he was taking shots at those black people, at those of us who are saying no tangibles, no vote. That's what it sounds like. And that's the same type of shots that the A Dunce crew take at the black people who aren't voting. And, you know, because we're not getting tangibles. They take those same type of shots. Oh, you can't be lazy now. You got to get off the couch. And he's and they like to use scare tactics, tactics as well. Chuck D is in there on his Twitter page using scare tactics. We just got to get Trump out of here. You know, tr if, if we don't do that, Trump's going to be in office next year, y'all. Y'all don't want that, do you? E that's everybody's game plan. It's just vote for me so we can get Trump out of here and I'll give you nothing. That's what it's all about. I was really disappointed in Chuck D for that because you are supposed to be public enemy. You know what you know what that name means, and then all of a sudden you're kicking out Flavor Flay. First off, you kicked out Professor Griff, and you know maybe that might have been a okay decision because you didn't want to mess up your bag. But Professor Griff was saying some truths. He might have presented it a little, you know, waywardly, but he's, he was saying some truths, but you banned him from the group. Now you're firing Flavor Flav just so you could do some show for Bernie. And then I seen another clip of Bernie Sanders had a boombox on his shoulder and he put the boombox on his shoulder. And then he was, it was with Trey from, uh, from, uh, Texas. And then he, he played the music. He was like, is this how you, this how you wear it in the hood? Dude, this is not the 80s anymore. No, nobody walk around with boom boxes today on their shoulder. You cornball. But see, this is the type of deception they give to us. 
And like I said, you can't trust these celebs. They're all like in bed with these politicians. When their owners say do something, they got to do it. Now, believers, the term believers in this verse, the Arabic term mu'min, you can't deceive a mu'min, a, a, a believer, a sincere believer. You can't deceive them in such a manner unless Allah wills because a mu'min sees with the light of Allah as the hadith of the prophet said. So if one has not reached the level of mu'min, then you may still be able to be deceived. This is why Allah says they think they can deceive Allah and the believers, but they won't. They will only deceive themselves. So the believers, the mu'min is not one who is easily deceived. And when he is on point, he sees through their nonsense. So as inshallah, us being believers, we need to use the light that Allah has given us to see through their bull crap and to benefit humanity with the light that Allah has given us. Moving on to the next verse. In verse 10, Allah says, in their hearts is a disease. So Allah has increased their disease. And for them is a painful punishment because they habitually used to lie. See, this is not only in reference to the hypocrites amongst the Muslims. This can also be attributed to the hypocrisy of these politicians. Democracy is hypocrisy. And when you got people deceiving you to continue to vote, even though you get nothing, and you continue to do it, then such a hypocrisy will increase the disease. And what is this disease that's talked about? It is in fact the same hypocrisy. They claim to be believers or people of the book. And they say we believe in Allah in the last day. These white supremacists, that's what they claim. But the way they operate using their democracy or whatever system they come into contact with, because to a certain degree, certain aspects of democracy make sense. But when white supremacy comes into contact with anything, it corrupts it. So their democracy is the white supremacist version of it. So there's really no justice involved. So really it's hypocrisy. And when you continue to participate, you are increasing them in their hypocrisy. When you say, when you finally say, no, we are not going to participate in this voting process unless we get something specifically, just as everyone else does, then they get shook because it's like, uh oh, this wasn't set up for them to get anything. They're going to expose our white supremacist version of democracy we have set up. And if they expose it, the others will see it. Um, um, do something. Um, call them bots. Um, pander to the women amongst their community. Um, Bring out juvenile. Bring out more rappers. We need more blunts. We need more guns. Tell them you got hot sauce in your bag. The other disease they have in their hearts is their disease of white supremacy. And in reality, whether you call it out or you don't call it out, this disease still increases uh, in, in oppression. The funny part about this disease and what makes it keep increasing is one aspect is in one aspect is that their their white supremacy comes from as Dr. Francis so eloquently put it it comes from their fear of genetic annihilation so really their idea of supremacy is based on their fear of inferiority so whenever they see black people making strides it increases their disease when they see black people having more children and they look and their numbers are dwindling it increases their disease. And as I said before, my opinion is that this is the same disease that the Shaitan Iblis had. He was of the jinn race, which came before the humans. They are beings made of smokeless fire. And many of the, these jinn became corrupted. So Allah wiped out most of them and saved a few, one of them being Iblis, Satan. In my opinion, Satan had this same fear of genetic annihilation. And when Allah said to the angels, I am about to create man, 
Satan's fear was even more increased. He was like, oh no, what, if, what about me? Will I be left behind? Will there be no more jinn? The reason I think this is, is because there is a hint of it in what the angels asked to Allah when Allah said he was going to create mankind. The angels asked, basically, are you about to create a people who will cause mischief on the earth just like the jinn just did? You see what they did. Now you're going to create humans who have freedom of choice just like the jinn? And the angels said, why would you do that, Allah, when you have us? We worship you without ceasing and we do whatever you command and we never disobey you. It's not, it's not even in our creational nature to disobey you. And Allah told them, I know what you know not. Now you have to remember, Satan was up there in the company of the angels as well. And this is where many Christians get it confused. They think Satan was an angel. No, angels aren't allowed to disobey. They're not created with the ability to disobey Allah. So it believes Satan was of the jinn, but he was brought up to the company of the angels because he became so pious. So Iblis was up there in the company of the angels when this combo was going on. So unlike the angels, Satan had freedom of choice. So he probably was having the same thoughts that the angels were having, except he had the ability to say to himself, nah, I'm not feeling this Adam dude. I'm not feeling him. I did all this worship to get brought up to the heavens just for a human made of clay to replace me. You will not replace us. You will not replace us. And so when Allah told the creation to bow to Adam out of respect, Iblis said, man, bump that. I'm better than him. I'm made of fire and he's made of black clay. Allah told him, look, you, you can go ahead and get up out of here because this is not a place for the arrogant. And so Iblis promised to lead his creation astray except for the mu'min, except for the believers. And I, in my opinion, similar happened here on earth. Satan came to the white race and said to them, look, look around you, man. You're surrounded. You're surrounded by all black people all across the globe. They're either black or have some form of high level of melanin to where they're not white. So it's melanated people all across this globe. If you don't do something, they will eventually genetically wipe you out. And he instilled this fear into them. And then you have the Muslims conquering Spain. That was like really the white race's last straw. That was really Shaitan. He was able to use that against him because then after that, at least Satan came and was like, see, I told you, look at your people, look at your women now. They're not even fully white anymore. These black people have ran through your women so much, they can't even go back to being truly white. You got to do something. And thus came white supremacy. And that disease has been increasing ever since. And this is, these are just my opinions based on what I'm reading from the Quran and from the Hadith and things of that nature. Especially when we look at white supremacy and when we add to that their genetic fear of annihilation, it, it just all makes sense. It all adds up. But Allah tells us what the end is for such people. Their end is a painful punishment, whether it be in this life or the next. So with all the revolutions, slave revolts, movements, and the fighting back of those oppressed came their punishment. Black people getting on cold now and presidential candidates having to drop out of races, forcing the narrative and putting our jargon out on the national airwaves is punishment to them. Watching their numbers fall off, their population fall off is punishment to them. The opioid crisis is their punishment. AIDS is their punishment. Police officers starting to not get off as easy anymore. And, and these punishments will increase and get worse and worse until Jesus, the son of Mary, descends and gives the final blow to their corrupt system and to their God the Dajjal, the Antichrist. Uh, or until such people die and then they will be thrown head first into the hellfire. And Allah says this is so because they used to tell lies. 
the lie of white supremacy and everything that comes with it. Look at your boy Bloomberg. He had to get out the race again as well. But look at your boy Bloomberg lying, talking about stop and frisk. Basically saying, yeah, well, we needed it because most blacks are criminals. And that's just one example. So moving on to verse 11, Allah says, And when it is said to them, do not cause corruption on the earth, they say we are but reformers. We are but peacemakers. I mean... This verse is pretty much self-explanatory. The melanated people who respect the earth and its people, the righteous Muslims, the righteous Muslim people of the earth, those people of the book who are upon righteousness, all of those of the, of the globe who are about justice for the earth and its, and its inhabitants. They tell these white supremacists and their allies do not cause corruption on the earth. And what is their response, their response is, we are but peacemakers. We are reformers. We want good. But Allah just told us in the previous verse that they will be punished because they used to habitually lie. So we know that this statement from them is a lie. It is double speech. They came and massacred the Native Americans causing corruption but they called it seeking out new land. They called it escaping persecution. They called it wanting religious freedom. They called it wanting peace. The slave trade in their minds was reforming and building a nation and economy because, hey, these people aren't humans anyway. The harm they do to the earth, raping it and dumping chemicals in it all type of gases in the air, chemicals in the air, etc. They say this is so because it is for the advancement of the nations. All of these things, they tell you it is for your good. It's for your own good. We only want for you what's good. But what does Allah tell us about these white supremacists and their likes? In this same chapter, way down in verse 205, Allah says that these type of people, they wish no good to come to you from your Lord. So those who believe, the true Muslim believers who see with the light of Allah, they know that nine times out of 10, what these white supremacists offer to you as good is usually not. Allah tells us in the Quran as well that corruption has appeared on land and sea because of what people's hands have earned. And this is so, so that they may taste some of what they have done to themselves and so that they might return in repentance to Allah. This is in Surah Rum, chapter Roman. So we know what it is. But these people, they will never turn to repentance, most of them, because their disease, as mentioned in the previous verse, verses, has taken over their hearts. It has increased. Moving on to verse 12, it says, Unquestionably, it is they who are the corruptors, but they perceive it not. So Allah gives us the answer straight out so there is no confusion left. Unquestionably, unquestionably, it is they who are the corruptors, but they perceive it not. Many of these white supremacists don't perceive it because they believe that they are actually doing what is right. They truly believe that white supremacy is correct and it is what Allah is pleased with. Not something that, you know, that was written to come to pass and Allah is displeased with it and it needs to be destroyed. No, they see it as something that Allah ordained and is actually pleased with. Many people believe this is so. And this is why they don't perceive that they are indeed corruptors. Satan, Iblis, has fooled them and then they have fooled themselves. 
In chapter 29, verse 38 of the Quran, Allah tells us about Ad and Thamud. These are two different nations. And uh, Allah tells us that Shaitan made their deeds fair seeming to them. They made them seem good and correct in their eyes. And Allah adds, even though they were intelligent, these evil deeds they were doing, they were made to seem good in their eyes. So these people are intelligence, but their intelligence has not helped them. It has only made them arrogant. And it sh also shows that intelligence and wisdom are two different things. We have to combine intelligence and wisdom to be an upright person. Moving on to chapter 2, verse 13. Allah says, And when it is said to them, Believe as the people have believed, they say, Should we believe as the foolish have believed? Unquestionably, it is they who are the foolish, but they know it not. And see, this is where this next verse comes in. Since they think they are so intelligent and are arrogant in their intelligence. And Satan has led them astray in thinking that they are superior in their race using their arrogance of intelligence. So when the righteous believers say to them, no, you're wrong for that. Give up what you're doing and follow the laws of Allah. Allah commands justice and proper treatment to the people of the globe and to the globe itself. Believe in the true Allah, not your satanic white God, which is really Satan that you call God and you fool us to believe that you are speaking about Allah. No, but we want you to believe in the true Allah and follow his laws. These people, white supremacists, they respond since they think they are so smart. Should we believe as the fools have believed? Even with these scientists, they got all this knowledge, yet they are atheists. And when people ask them, why don't you believe in Allah? You have all this information and you see the wonders of the universe. How doesn't it bring you to all of this was created? How, like, how does this, how does it bring to you that all of this was created without purpose? It, it just, it just popped up here. How does it bring you to that? Allah says about those who have true wisdom and true intelligence and reflect. Allah says in chapter 3 verse 191, he says, Such people who remember Allah while standing or sitting or lying on their sides and give thought to the creation of the heavens and the earth saying, Our Lord, you did not create this aimlessly. Exalted are you above such a thing like that. So protect us from the punishment of the fire. People with wisdom, people with true intelligence and wisdom, when they look at the creation of the heavens and the earth, when they look at the wonders of the universe, they can't not say there's no God. They, they, they have to say there's a God because all of this couldn't be here just by chance. But as I said, they are not wise. In their white supremacist minds, they like, why should we believe as these people have believed? If we believe in Allah, even if even if we believe in Allah in the true and truly follow Christianity, for instance, not the bastardized, not the bastardized white supremacist version of it that we hide behind. But if we truly believe in true Christianity, let's just take that, for instance, even by let's say even if we believe in the true Judaism that was brought by Musa, who was a black man as well. That was brought by Musa. Let's say we even truly believed in true Judaism. Okay, we believe in that. We would have to be fair and just to everybody. We couldn't, we couldn't control the world. We couldn't rape the world. We couldn't oppress the weak or whoever we wanted. We couldn't take advantage of the black people of the globe. Why Now, why in the hell would we do that? You mean to tell me we can't hoard wealth? We have to give some of it to the poor? Why the hell would I do that? You mean to tell me I have to fast from sunup to sunset? Why in the hell would I do that? You all are the fools for following the laws of Allah. And see, this is why I'm above you. I do what I want and make my own rules, you fool. 
And it gets so bad in their propaganda. It gets so bad that almost you would think that, damn, am I a fool? That's how bad their propaganda gets. If you notice in their TV shows or, or their little cartoon comedy shows, they always paint the religious person as a simp, a lame, a, a, a mind control terrorist, someone, basically someone who you don't want to be. So yeah, people start falling for this propaganda, but Allah reminds us that unquestionably, without a doubt, they are the real idiots. And because of their arrogance or wealth or whatever, they realize it not. And winding down to the last two verses for this specific broadcast, I, like I said, I will do a part two, inshallah. But in verse 14, moving on, in verse 14, Allah says, And when they meet those who believe, they say, We believe. But when they are alone with their evil ones, they say, Indeed. We are with you. We were only mockers. Allah kind of gives us a repeat of what he says in verse 8, but with a little more detail. These people are hypocrites, just like I said earlier. And when they get along with their constituents, they laugh amongst each other at how foolish the people are for believing them. Because the previous verses let you know they see you as dumb. They especially love to do this with black people, with us, especially the politicians. They love doing that. When black people ask for tangibles, they say, yes, I believe in giving black people tang tangibles. So therefore, we're going to give something to everyone and it will eventually affect black people because this is, this, the disparity is so great. And in the past, black folk used to fall for this. And these politicians with their benign and neglect policies would go back to their people and laugh at how they're playing with words and how they fooled those blacks again. All we had to say, you know, it's what they're saying amongst each other is, I mean, all we had to say was minorities, people of color, and we got them. But once black people started getting on code and realizing the game, then they just came out and told you what it was. Ain't that right, Kamala Harris? You know, I'm not going to do anything specifically for black people. And we see how that went. So they'll tell you they believe in Christianity or say Islam is a peaceful religion while they're blowing up black Muslims in Africa, while they're blowing up Palestinians. They'll say, yeah, we believe in the empowerment of black people. But they really don't. But also here is. This is where I kind of got to get on my Muslim brothers and sisters a little bit. The, the, you know, and I have to get on my immigrant Muslim brothers and sisters on this one because I, I've been seeing these hashtags going around saying Muslims for Bernie, Muslims for Biden, etc. This is one reason democracy is hypocrisy. When you're around your black Muslim brothers and sisters, you say you believe just like them. And as believers, you want what's best for your brothers and sisters as you want for yourself, correct? As a believer, you are to be against oppression and the worst oppression of today is white supremacy, correct? So you are to be against white supremacy as a believer, no matter what color you are, if, if you're really about this dean. So you claim to believe, if you claim to believe, that's what you should be against then. But when you get around these politicians, <laughs> Ilhan Omar, <clears throat> I see you hanging at the LGBT parades, doing these, you know, doing all these things for your group and ignoring the foundational black Americans and those similar to her. You claim to believe, but you're talking about voting for someone who will not do anything for your black Muslim brothers and sisters. And then even when you do get the tangibles from these politi politicians, you, you won't be on some finesse stuff and give it to your foundational black American brothers and sisters. No, you're going to keep it for yourself and try to keep them out. We become ignored. So I had to, I had to throw a shot at y'all right here on, in, in that verse too. Don't say we believe and then when you get along with each other, start crapping on everybody else. 
start crapping on foundational black Americans specifically and riding with these politicians like they're going to just because they're going to give you something and you're not even going to help your brothers and sisters out with it. Don't do that. And moving on to verse 15, Allah says, but Allah mocks them and prolongs them in their transgression while they wander blindly. So Allah says, just like these people try to joke and play games with those who believe as well as those who wish for good upon this earth, Allah will mock them in this life or the next and or the next. So you will see some of them be embarrassed publicly, arrested for pedophilia, caught soliciting prostitutes, alleged suicides in prison, dying in the harshest of ways. Something simple as, you know, look at okra. Allah mocked her. All that anti-Kobe, anti-Michael stuff she was doing to run interference for an alleged rapist like Weinstein and others. She used that as a cover to hide Weinstein and others like him. She didn't call out their stuff. But at the same time, she was demonizing black men. Allah mocked her because you see how she tripped on stage at the same time she was talking about having balance in life and she tripped and fell right on her behind. So yes, Allah mocks them in this life and they will be mocked as well in the next. When we are all crossing the bridge over the hellfire and it will be totally dark, you can't even see your hand in front of your face and the bridge, this bridge will be thin as hell. Only the light of your faith will light the way for you. And these hypocrites of the faith, these white supremacists, these evil ones, they will come to the believing Muslims and say, hey, can we get some of your light? And, you know, by the will of Allah, Allah will mock them by having us say to them, go find your own light. Didn't you call us fools in the first life? Well, now who looks foolish? Where, where's your light at? Go to the back and find your own light, buddy. So they will wander blindly, but that is also for this life too, they will wander blindly. As long as they act in such a way, Allah will prolong them wandering in disbelief until they meet their demise. And then they will meet their demise again in the life to come. And Allah confirms this, but Allah confirms this in the next verse. But as I said, I will end this here I will upload a part two of this, inshallah, and finish off the last few verses so we can continue to look at white supremacy in light of the Quran. And with that, remember to subscribe, like, and share. If you want to hear the last broadcast that I did that YouTube took down and flagged my page for a week for, the SoundCloud link will be in the description, as well as there will be a SoundCloud link possibly to this one in the description as well and we will pick up the last four or five verses that i want to touch on at a later date in the future inshallah this has been black and muslim in america with your host Bilal abdullah assalamu alaikum and peace